Hello and welcome back to yet another GCSE revision lesson. Now, within this video, carrying on the AQA Worlds and Lives Poetry Revision Series, I'm going to be looking at On an Afternoon Train from Pearlie to Victoria. The title is a mouthful, okay? And this poem is by James Berry. Now, before I do a line by line analysis of this poem, I'm going to begin by giving you some contextual information relating to the poem, okay? And especially what you need to understand when it comes to the poet himself, James Berry, influences that would have weaved the way into the poem, including the reference to Quakers, okay? So let's get into it, all right? Now, to begin, always remember that James Berry, right? He was a Jamaican poet. He was originally from Jamaica and he was born there in 1924 and he died in 2017, okay? So he's also a modern poet. Now, at 24 years old, after living for 24 years in Jamaica, he made the obviously very life-changing decision to move to England, okay? So he set sail for England and he set sail at a time after the Second World War where lots and lots of people in the Caribbean were called on by the Crown in England to come and help rebuild the country, okay? So people like him who left the Caribbean during this time for England for job opportunities, but also in response from, you know, the mother country to come and rebuild England after it had been ravaged by two world wars were called and were known as the Windrush Generation. And they were named uh, this name, right? So the Windrush Generation, because they were named after the first ship called the Empire Windrush that transported West Indians to a place called Tilbury in Essex, okay? A really massive dock in Essex called Tilbury. So James Berry formed part of this really important Windrush generation, these first initial group of Caribbeans in the modern era after the Second World War who moved to England, okay? In the Second World War, okay? After the Second World War. Anyway, um, by the late 70s, James Berry actually became quite successful as a poet, okay? So by the late 70s, he actually became a published poet and a lot of his poetry after the 70s and, you know, all the way until he passed away, lots of his poetry explored his West Indian background, including On an Afternoon Train from Pearlie to Victoria. And a lot of his writing also reflected Caribbeans living in the UK, okay, what life was like for immigrants like him, and the issues of racism that a lot of immigrants faced, especially the first uh, generation of um, Windrush immigrants in the late 40s and the 50s who came to a society that was not very accepting of them and saw them as outsiders. So a lot of his poetry really explores that. And his work, um, expresses the importance of people accepting each other and living side by side, despite the differences in communities, despite the differences in cultures, okay? So a lot of his poetry is also a call on people who read it to actually try to be open-minded in accepting each other. But equally, lots of his writing does express a lot of rage at, you know, oppression, injustice, and racism. A lot of people, including himself, had to put up with when they came to England. Now, when it comes to this poem specifically, Afternoon Train from Pearly to Victoria, the individual that the main character in the poem sits next to is a Quaker. And I think it's really important to be clear on what a Quaker is. Remember that Quakers were Protestant Christians who campaigned for peace and equality. And they were very famously known for opposing the slave trade, especially in the USA, and you know, um, really, really going against the slave trade, even at its height, when most of society saw it as very acceptable, okay? So Quakers are a denomination of the Protestant faith. This is Christians who really believe in equality and they constantly campaign for peace and equality, okay? That's really important when you're going through and reading the poem itself. So now that we have an understanding of the contextual factors that influence this poem, let's have a look and do a line by line analysis of the poem itself. <laughs> 